Hello everyone, it's Melinda and I've got a pretty exciting video for you today um, about this gorgeous, unique um, purple stone called Pinite. And in this case, uh, these are locally known as Wilsonite. Um, <clears throat> this is a very uncommon uh, mineral. Most of you uh, may not have even heard of it before um, and certainly uh, probably unless you're <laughs> a local like myself would not have uh, dug up any of this purple variety. Uh, it's certainly a rarer version of pinite. Um, and this particular uh, stone, this purple version that we have here in Ontario, it hasn't really been discussed much since the 1800s. Um, <clears throat> so when I did uh, kind of show off some of my specimens uh, online. There was a gentleman who argued that it was not pinite, um, but I've since done quite a lot of research, went back into uh, publications from the 1800s, and it is indeed pinite, and I'll get into the clarification um, as to why he thought it wasn't and so on a little bit later on. Um, so the alteration of silicate clay minerals, such as cordierite, nepheline, or scapolite, to a fine-grained pseudomorph mica is often called pinite. <clears throat> and these specimens were brought to a long-standing, highly accredited uh, geologist in the area. He was a professor. He's now retired, but he was a professor um, in that area for many, many years, um, and he took a quick glance and knew instantly that it was pinite. I had never heard of pinite before, so I, you know, I tried to ask for a little bit more clarification, and he was just adamant. It's just, it's pinite. It's pinite. <laughs> um, and, you know, that I was quite confident in that, but then when someone else kind of con contradicted that, I thought, uh, It'd be fun to do a little bit more research and then share the findings with everyone. Um, so mineralogically, pinite is primarily composed of mica, usually the muscovite version, and clay group minerals. So it's mica and clay together. This is my least uh, purple or violet specimen, so I'll show you this one first. And we are very fortunate uh, to be able to find more of this in the uh, the far out, but still our outskirts of Sudbury, Ontario, where I do run one of my tours. So if you're listening to this video and watching and thinking, oh my gosh, I absolutely have to have that for my uh, collection, then uh, certainly get in contact with me. My large specimen is a very dark purple right in this area. Beautiful. So before it was given the nickname Wilsonite, um, it was referred to as Pinite Muscovite or Agalmatolite uh, in the 1800s here in Canada when they were still uh, discovering these types of specimens and deciding what exactly they are. There's the richest purple just in this area here. Isn't that just gorgeous? So a galmatolite consists predominantly of massive felted very fine grain muscovite of the form called pinite together with variable amounts of relic quartz. So quartz can very much be a common inclusion in a galmatolite which they originally thought this material was. Uh, however the word a is no longer used for this stone. 
uh, because it is more widely used for a variety of pyrophyllite used by Chinese artisans for carvings um, in pagodas and similar types of objects. Uh, and it's usually soft and sometimes soapy. It can be a grayish green or grayish yellow color. Um, and that, again, is the uh, Chinese pyrophyllite, what I'm referring to, uh, the grayish yellow color. Uh, it is sometimes also referred to as soapstone. So because um, that type of stone being used by Chinese artisans was named agalmatolite and, you know, is gaining popularity, they've locally stopped referring to this type of stone um, as agalmatolite. <clears throat> for these specific Ontario specimens. Um, but when you go back uh, into the documents from the 1800s, uh, previous to when they decided to change that, you will see that word used uh, interchangeably with pinite. Isn't that just a striking purple color? I just love it. It is very difficult to uh, pull from the earth. You need to be very strong if you're going to break this up, up on your own. <laughs> So pinite is considered a variety of muscovite, uh, but it does lack that silky luster of muscovite. It doesn't have that shimmering shine. Um, other minerals that occur in minor amounts include relic hornblende and chlorite, uh, and that gives rise to the darker green variety of pinite, which is far more common than this purple one. Um, even when you look up pinite uh, on Mindat or Mindat, uh, you'll mostly see uh, green versions of the stone. <clears throat> green is the version that people are most familiar with. So changes in the oxidation state of iron given, uh, gives rise to hematite in the composition, uh, and that's what makes it pink to maroon. However, um, these ones specifically uh, are not due to hematite. I believe they're due to manganese. So in 1874, the material des described as a galmatolite um, was just ordinary massive pinite in its amorphous compact texture, luster, and other physical characters, but contains more silica, uh, which may be from free quartz or feldspar as an impurity. Um, so prior to 1874, uh, pinite, this particular pinite was still being referred to as a galmatolite, um, and, in ex and exchangeably also with pinite, uh, and then it was noticed that uh, like I said before, quartz, but also feldspar 
uh, was an impurity in its chemical makeup. And this does not discredit it as pinite, um, which I think was confusing the gentleman who uh, wasn't sure that this was actually pinite. He was convinced that the feldspar in its chemical makeup um, excluded it from that category, but it doesn't seem that geologists made that uh, call when they were uh, exploring this particular stone. So our unique purple pinite that we have here in Ontario uh, was named Wilsonite in 1853 by T.S. Hunt. Uh, and that was in honor of James Wilson of Perth, Ontario, who was the first person to discover this beautiful uh, purple stone. Um, and he was remembered as a zealous student of uh, the mineralogy of that district. So it was named in honor of him. So this pink, rose red, mauve, or violet variety of muscovite um, is specifically a potassium, magnesium, aluminum, silicate hydroxide. Um, it is almost identical in composition, hardness, and density to uh, geysikite, and very similar to allurgite as well. Although wilsonite has a distinct cleavage form in crystal habits. I just absolutely love that color. So exactly like they um, say for pinite, wilsonite is also a pseudomorph after nepheline or cordierite, uh, and also possibly after scapolite as well. And like I said earlier, it's beautiful uh, reddish, and in this case, very, very purple color um, is from the presence of manganese in its structure. It's the manganese that is coloring it. Um, sadly, Wilsonite is not considered a valid mineral name. Uh, the attempt was made, but it was never made official. So the term pinate is more correctly applied to this uh, type of muscovite alteration from scapolite, feldspar, or spodumene. Um, which is probably why the geologist that I consulted was very firmly uh, only willing to tell me that it was pinite because um, it seems Wilsonite is more of a local name, not that local names don't become known, they certainly do, um, but just that it hadn't been officially recognized as the name for this purple variety that we have here in Ontario. So pinite is the technical term that has been approved. However, historically and locally, it has been called Wilsonite. And I think that's important to note as well. It really uh, allows it to stand out from its uh, green counterparts. Um, this is still pinite, but it's uh, kind of blended and forming into a chert. Uh, you can still see the purple pinite in there. There's also some iron oxides red in there um, And it is more smooth similar to a chert. So it was on its way to being uh, Mixed and melded and is no longer a pure pinite specimen This one as well This one as well. Very, very smooth. Almost like look waxy. But this is the real deal right here. Absolutely gorgeous. Um, so you can find translucent specimens of this gemstone and the thinner you slice it, the more translucent it looks. Um, 
and it, it can be used uh, in jewelry and cabochons. Uh, from what I've heard, it's a little bit difficult to work with. Um, so when you do find, and it's also rare, as I've been saying, so when you do find cabochons or jewelry made of this material, um, that's like a rare find. Um, and this, like I've said a few times, this purple material has only been reported here in Canada, uh, which makes it very special. It's definitely a gorgeous color, very desirable. Um, whereas the green versions uh, occur in other areas throughout the world, uh, including Scotland as a um, one worth mentioning. <laughs> but it's not an overly common uh, stone and especially not so in this beautiful purple color yeah so i hope you enjoyed that guys and learned a little something about this rare local stone that we have here um, again if you're wanting to collect some we do that on my sudbury tour that usually would take place in july um yeah so i hope you enjoyed that as much as i did i really loved uh, going through the historical <laughs> the historical writings about it um, and finding out the true story of it. Um, I absolutely love the nickname Wilsonite, even if it hasn't been made, you know, official. I think that's, it's very fitting for it. Um, yeah, so I'll be doing another video soon. I hope you uh, enjoyed this one and that one. Talk soon. Bye.